Good morning and once again allow me to talk about today's lecture. It is a recording that we are going to use for our class and today's lecture is based on community based and we are talking about planning a community based project and this project that we are talking about as we look at this we are saying that we need to move on with planning and before we start let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Be a blessing to us in this class. Remember our families. Remember the students. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Allow me to send greetings all the way from Arua town, Arua campus, Arua city. As you know, it is all this. We did not plan to be here, but I want to tell you it is by God's providence that we are planning and we are here. Allow me to start by definition. Allow me to start by definition. What is planning? Planning can be said as a process of determining what to do and how it will be done and how it will be done in the future and how it will be done in the future so that how it will be done in the future so that the objectives so that the objectives of and in, in the future sorry I to be done in the future I to be done in the future in an organized way in an organized way so that the objectives of an individual the objectives of an individual a group are achieved and as we talk of this and we are saying all this is planning we are saying planning is a process of determining what to do and how it will be done in the future in an organized way so that the objectives of, a, of an individual, a group, are achieved. And this, you look at all this, we are saying planning is a process. And it's not only a process, but it's a process of determining what to do and how it will be done when in the future. And all this must be organized and the objectives of an individual or a group are achieved. Now, with this you understand that that is planning. Therefore, what is a plan? What is a plan? We can say a plan is the result. A plan is the result of the planning process. You go to a tailor to make clothes. You say that you need this type of trouser. You need this type of cloth. And the tailor works on it in terms of what is really needed. So the result of the planning process is a plan. Now with this, we have forms of a plan. We have forms of a plan. The only two forms of a plan that we know. It can either be a formal plan, can either be a formal plan, or an informal plan. A formal plan is always organized and detailed plan. Most of the time it is written for projects that need funding. An informal plan is a simple plan that we just come up with and we agree upon. It is always an informal, a simple plan. In a house, you can decide today, I'm cooking this, I'm doing this, I'm making this, I'm organizing this. You don't need it for funding. Now this leads us to the types of plans. Types of plans. We have got one, the corporate plan. Corporate plan. You realize companies like MTN, Bukema University, they have got a corporate plan. You can do anything, but you cannot go against their plan. We have tactical plan. We have tactical plan. These are plans that require some technical that we have with. Like in advertisement or marketing, you have tactical plan that you need to use. We also have plans that are called operational plans. We also have plans that are called operational plans. You have a plan according to the operation of activities that you are going to have. We also have plans that are called single-use plan. 
We also have plants that are called standing. We also have plants that are called standing use plan. We also have plants that are called specific plan. These are plants that are meant for a specific thing. After that project is done, it is done. And then we have the last type of plan that I have for you is a flexible plan. Plan that somebody can maneuver and move with to a never, another level of understanding. And uh, it makes work easier when you have all these types of plans that are working. Forms of plan, a plan, and even planning. Now this leads me to the next part, that if we have those, somebody can ask themselves, which approach do we use? So we have approaches, we have approaches of planning. You can recognize two of them, one, two. The first one, we can categorize it as top-down approach. Top-down approach. And the second one, we can categorize it as bottom-up approach. Bottom-up approach. Now, all these two approaches are practiced most of the time. And some of the successful organizations will always tell you that we have never used only one type of approach. They have used various types of approach with them. And these various types of approach include one top-down approach. At this approach level, you realize one thing that happens, the management, the management does all the planning, does all the thinking, does all the decision making, and then they throw the things down to the implementers, the, the lower level of managers or the lower level of workers. But the, the bottom-up approach, it requires that the top-level management, top-level management works together with the low-level management. And when they do this, they come up with a single plan, a plan that is acceptable. All these plans have got their advantages. If you want quick results, you use the top-down approach. It is more of dictatorship kind of. If you want long-lasting, sustainable types of projects, then they say that we need to incorporate what the poor or the vulnerable are saying. So it is always from bottom coming up. So that when it is implemented, you realize the people who are beneficiaries know what is happening. The people who are implementing the project know what is happening. The people who are supposed to benefit from the project, they know what is happening. Unlike the top-down approach whereby the leaders just make a decision and bring it down to us. You need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. You don't have a say in any of them. Now, as we look at all this, we are looking at the idea of decisions being made here. Planning is making decisions about which course of action to follow. So as you make decision on which course of action to follow, when you plan, you need to do what? You need to establish objectives. What are the objectives? What are we talking about? What is our objective in this plan? What do we really want to get as our objective? Now when we plan, we are saying planning is also making a decision on which course of action to follow. For you to do this better, you also need to develop strategies. Which strategies are you going to use to achieve this project? Which strategies are you going to use to achieve this project? We are also saying planning is also about making, planning is making decisions. And some of this, we also need for you to go with this, you need to prepare a budget. For you to plan while making a decision, you need to prepare what? A budget. You also need to know that apart from you moving, there are also some things that you need to know. Next is establish policies. What is it that is supposed to be done and what is it that is not supposed to be done? And lastly, as you think of what planning is making a decision, we need to have standards. So establish standards. And these standards we are talking about is that when you look at planning as a process, and we are saying planning is all about making decisions, as you make decisions in planning, you need to establish the objectives, develop the strategies, 
prepare a budget, establish policies, and establish what? The standards. And all this makes me and you a good manager or a good director for an organization. What are some of the significances of planning? What are some of the significances of planning? I know you know a lot, but I have some few here identified for you that some of the recognized general principles, significances of planning that are included in our norms and included in the normal daily life of activities that we go on. Right now, I'm in Arua for a project, but these are some of the benefits that we are seeing in the idea of planning. Number one, that one of the significances of planning, significance of planning, one of them is it enables you to focus on your goal. When you plan, you are always focused on your goal. We have a group of 30 students from Bugema University in Arua. And right now, every day we have a meeting. And these meetings are planning, they're follow-up. We call them now implementation meetings. Planning was done in Bugema University. Now in the field we are doing implementation meetings. And every day we remind ourselves of what was our plan. What did we really want to achieve? So one of the things that we get is it helps us to focus on our goal. Number two, it minimizes uncertainty. Minimizes uncertainty. We have things that comes in abruptly. We have had cases of our students who are doing mission in Arua, having some of the challenges, we call them uncertainties. But when we plan, we minimize all these uncertainties. Number three, we are saying, when we plan, we have effective control. When we plan, we have effective control. These are some of the things that we have, that when you plan properly, the, the, the control of the budget, the control of activities, the control of time is effective. When you, when you plan, you also have an advantage of what? Being innovative. So we have innovation and creativity. I like what we're doing in Arua right now, the mission. Students came in with a different expectation, a different picture. Some of them have never passed past Kampala. But now in Arua, things are different. Mission is totally different. They are waking up very early. They are doing these things. And, and some of the things that we are doing here as staffs, we are here, but they have solutions to the challenges that they have. We had a problem in the kitchen. They have organized a better way to cook. Nobody is cooking for us, but we are students and us, we are cooking together. And there is a lot of creativity. Foods that are being cooked, you really realize that people are creative every day. Every day we appreciate every group. Reason is, we plan, and the plan has given them a lot of innovation and creativity. I want to tell you we are enjoying our stay in Arua. We are really enjoying our stay in Arua. Everybody is involved. Students are involved. They're bringing food. We are eating together. We are talking together. We are encouraging each other. We have a lot of mentorship programs. Everybody is active. I'm good in peer system. I'm good in this. I'm good in driving. I'm good in this. And this is what we call the importance of planning. We have only one motorcycle here supply, serving almost 30 people. We have only one car serving three centers with peer system. And all these are moving on because there's a lot of creativity. People realize that there are a lot of transport issues. We have now started working in groups, doing things as a group. We have people we call mama, we have people we call papa. And whenever they talk, we agree. In planning also, one of the importance, it brings, it brings something that we call organizational effectiveness. Organizational effectiveness. And as we talk about organization effectiveness, we are looking at how effective is the organization. Like now, we are here with the church as an organization. It is very effective. With the planning, also it brings what we call economy of operation. Economy of 
operation. You, you don't feel that you're burdened. You don't feel that we're only one part is burdened. Economy in operation, sorry. We have economy in operation. And everything that is moving on, there's a helping hand. Wake up in the morning, the prayer people are there, the people cooking are there, the people doing sanitation are there, and things are moving because we plan and everything is moving on. Planning also, number seven, it facilitates. Planning facilitates coordination. Right now, I'm having a lecture with you. I'm recording this lecture for you. But activities are going on, even what I have to, to, be, to do. Like today, I have to be somewhere. But we have coordinated, facilitates coordination. And lastly, that when you plan, it helps us to avoid business failure. Avoid business failure. Failure. I want to tell you everything that we're doing every day as we wake up. Every day we better know that whatever we are doing is business. And we don't need to fail any in of our business. Waking up is business. Washing your clothes is business. Everything that we're doing, when you have the idea of business, you are an entrepreneur and you have the aspect of time coming in for your life and to move on. Why plan? Why Am I talking about planning? Why plan? One, a plan is like a constitution. A plan is like a constitution. You will always refer to the plan. You will always refer to the plan. It is a constitution guiding you on what to do and how to do it. Why do you plan? A plan is a tool for decision making. A plan is a tool for decision making. A plan is a tool for decision making. When you have a plan, decision is easy to come up with. A plan, we plan because we also need to know how best to use the scarce resources. How best to use the scarce resources. That's why we plan. We don't have enough. But the little that we have, we always want to use it to the maximum. So I don't need to have too much to solve, but I need to have a minimum that is acceptable to solve a, a very big portion. And then lastly, we are saying planning promotes, planning promotes agreement among partners. It promotes agreement among partners. Planning promotes agreement among Partners. If you're going to start a project, two people, if you don't plan properly, then we don't have an agreement. And you realize most of the time we have issues with such type of plan. Now this leads me, because I know at the back of your mind you're asking yourself now, if we have known the approaches of planning, we have also known the importance of planning, we have also known that these are the approaches and these are the forms and these are the types and even the reasons why we plan, therefore, sir, how then do we plan? How then do we plan? Allow me to take you through the planning cycle. That as we talk about planning in everyday life, where does it start from? And how does it end? And what do we get in? So from today's end for lecture, you'll agree with me that we are going to have an understanding that this is what we call planning. Now, allow me to take you through what we call the planning. Allow me to take you through the planning cycle. Allow me to take you through what we call the planning cycle. The planning cycle. The planning cycle. What do I mean when I talk about planning cycle? I mean, how do they all go to the community and start talking about planning? How do you come up with a plan? Allow me to take you through these stages. The first thing we need to know for us to have a plan, we need to do what we call a situation analysis. We need to do what we call a situation, a situation analysis. This is the first stage for us to talk about planning. 
What is the situation? You are going to plan for which location? You are going to plan for which people? You are going to plan what are the services that are taking place are available? You are going to plan what is it that they really need? The next lecture we shall look at what is situation analysis in deep. Now after doing a situation analysis, the next part that we go through is you have known the situation analysis, you have collected the problem. The situation analysis will even have a list of issues in the community. Then you need to do what we call problem. You need to do what the next thing is problem analysis and priority setting. Problem analysis and priority setting. So we have problem analysis and priority setting. At this level, at this level of analysis, situation analysis, you have a list of problems. So there's no way you can come in and then start managing all the problems in a community or all the problems in your house. You need to do what we call priority setting. And we are going to take you through a tool that we call pairwise ranking matrix. I'm going to take you a tool called pairwise ranking matrix. This tool is going to help us to prioritize a problem. And then from prioritizing that problem, I'm going to take you through another tool called problem tree analysis. This is a tool that is going to help us analyze the problem in terms of what are the causes, in terms of what are the consequences. And after looking at the problem analysis and priority setting, the third part we are going to look at, now that you have the problem, now that you have analyzed the problem, now that you understand the problem, the next is option appraisal and programming. How are you going to sort out this problem? Option appraisal and programming. If the problem is HIV AIDS in the community spread, how are you going to do about it? What do you really want to know? Now here we form our objectives. At this level we develop what we call the objectives. We develop the goal. We develop the activities. And this gives us, and if we go deep to this, we also go to the implementation part. How is the project going to be implemented? When are we monitoring? Now, that one leads you to the third, the fourth stage, and the fourth stage is what? Implementation. How are you going to do this? Allow me to remove implementation here and put things like budgeting here. Put things like the organogram here. Now this, when you come to that, we have organized that, then we come to implementation. What are we implementing? We are implementing what we need to do. Now at last, after going through the implementation, we have the last stage of monitoring and evaluation. At this level of implementation, you need to come in and look at what are we having. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the planning cycle. That the planning cycle says we need to have a situation analysis. The situation analysis help us to understand where we are in relation to where we want to be. The next will be problem analysis and prioritization. It helps us of all the problems we have, what is the priority and what do we need to address urgently. And after that, it takes us to the programming and option appraisal. Here we want to know what are our goals, objectives, what are the set of activities we need to be implemented and how should they be arranged. And then we come to implementation, we're talking about what implementation strategies do we need to have to put into place to ensure planned activities are implemented. And lastly, we have monitoring and evaluation. We ask ourselves to what extent have we achieved what we want to achieve in the plan. Ladies and gentlemen, what are the essential elements of a plan? 
what are the essential elements of a successful plan? Essential elements of successful plan. Elements of successful plan. Elements of successful plan. For you to have a successful plan, number one, ladies and gentlemen, gather information. Number one, gather information. You don't plan if you don't have information. We need to have information that is gathered. Number two, set objectives. The information you have, can you set objectives for it? What objectives that you have? Number three, after setting objectives, devise a strategy. Devise a strategy. After devising a strategy, implement your plan. Implement your plan. After implementing the plan, ladies and gentlemen, you need to monitor plan performance. Monitor plan performance. After that, we say number five, monitor plan performance. How is the plan moving on? Is it performing? And number six, we are saying evaluate the effectiveness. Evaluate the effectiveness. So these are some of the elements of a successful plan. If you want a successful plan, apart from understanding the planning cycle, we are saying this is the element of a successful plan. One, we are saying gather information. And after gathering information, we are saying set objectives, devise a strategy, implement your plan, monitor plan performance, evaluate the effectiveness of this plan. And that leads us that as we move on, we understand the characteristics of planning. We understand the characteristics of planning. What are some of the characteristics of planning that we have? Number one, we are saying planning is goal-oriented. Planning is goal-oriented. That for you to have a good plan, you need to set your goal. Planning is all about looking ahead. Planning is all about looking ahead or future. You don't plan for the past. We also plan for this, the future. We also say planning is an intellectual process. Planning is intellectual process. This is something that you need to understand that the process is intellectual and it involves the idea of us thinking and moving on. Planning involves choice and decision making. Number four, planning involves, it involves choice and decision making. Planning involves choice and decision making. Five, we are saying, planning is the primary function of management. Planning is the primary function of management. Planning is a primary function of management. Planning is a primary function of management. Planning is a primary function of management. And then we are saying, planning is also a continuous process. Planning is a continuous process. And lastly, we are saying, planning is all persuasive. Planning is all persuasive. So you don't come in as a teacher, you don't come in as a leader, you don't come in as a pastor, you don't come in as a community leader, and then you think that you are going to plan a lot. No, there's a lot of conflicts that need to be resolved when we talk about planning. And that's why we're saying planning is all persuasive. Allow me to continue and understand what are the principles of planning. What are the principles of planning? As you talk about planning, what are some of the principles that you need to put in place for you, as you think about planning as a leader, planning as the CEO, planning as the director, planning as a, a project manager, planning as a plan, as a program manager for an organization. So we are saying some of the principles for planning. 
some of the principles, some of the principles of planning include number one that you need one set goals. You need to have a goal as a good manager. What is your goal as you're doing this project? What is it that you want to achieve? As you're setting goals, number two, we are saying clarify tasks. What is to take place? Do you understand the tasks that are taking place? And after understanding all this, we are saying agree on roles. Agree on the roles. What role are supposed to be played by who and at what time? And then, after agreeing on roles, then you need to program, schedule what is taking place after this and what is moving on after this. And as a good manager, we are all saying that one of the best principles of planning is you need to learn. And every step that we move on, every decision that we make, we need to learn more about it. Now, allow me to finish by saying that as you look at planning, in our definition, we say that planning is a process. In our definition of planning, we say that planning is a process. And how is it a process? You'll agree with me, a process means steps. Allow me to, planning process, allow me to explain this, the planning process. Sorry. Planning process. And we are saying the planning process is a step kind of. We are saying it has to start from a point, goes to the second, goes to the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Now, if you look at these stairs, if you look at these stairs, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And I talk about planning process. Planning process dictates that number one, we create a vision. We are allowed to dream big, ladies and gentlemen. You don't manage a project if you don't have a vision. After creating a vision, assess the current situation. Assess the current situation. What is the situation like? You have dreamt, yes, but can your dream go through? After assessing the current situation, set goals. And after setting these goals, we agree that you need to establish objectives. And as you establish objectives, we are saying develop action plan. Develop action plan. And as you develop action plan, we are saying implement the plan. And as we implement the plan, we are saying lastly, evaluate progress and results. Evaluate progress and results. Allow me to say this. From this planning process, just imagine you are to name, you are to be asked, what is planning? And then you say, planning is the process. So the word process alone takes all this seven steps. So when I need to define what is planning, I can say planning is creating a vision, assessing the current situation, setting goals, establishing objectives, developing action plan, imp implementing the plan, and evaluating progress and results. So the word process alone, this simple word process, this simple word process here that you see, P R O C E S S one, two, three, four, five, six, seven gives us the seven stages. So whenever somebody talks about process from today and from ladies and gentlemen, get to understand that whenever I talk about process, this is what I mean. And if you apply this in life, that planning is a process, it means that we need to create a vision, assess the current situation, set goals, set objectives develop action plan, implement the plan, and evaluate progress. Ladies and gentlemen, the plan which we talked about, we said a plan is the result. A plan is the result of the planning process. 
That's what we say. That a plan is the result of the planning process. And now we are saying, when I talk about process, when I talk of process, I'm talking about these seven steps. Now, if you mix the plan plus the process, all these, when you put the plan and the process, Number one, ladies and gentlemen, that your plan, the end result of the planning process and the process should be integrated. They should be together. They should never be different. The plan and the process should be inclusive. The plan and the process should be realistic. The plan and the process should be appropriate. The plan and the process should be result-based. That whenever you plan, we must see the result. The plan and the process should be community-based. They should be accepted in the community. The plan and the process should be easy to understand. So as we clear today, we are saying all development initiatives have this idea. I want you to continue. And as you look at all this, can you think of the reasons why people will need a simple or a complex plan? Is there reasons why people should make the plan either complex or simple? The fact that you have a complex plan or a simple plan, number one, depends on the type of the project. The fact that you have a simple or a complex plan depends on the source of funds. If you're getting your funds from the government, if you're getting the funds from the UN, all this will determine whether the project is what? A simple plan or a, pro a, a complex plan. The ownership of the project and its purpose will make the project either to be, the plan either to be complex or simple. And lastly, the capacity to implement the project if you're starting a project for the first time and then the UN comes and gives you these millions and millions of dollars and you have never managed even a project of one million Uganda shillings, it will definitely become a complex plan for you. Look at this. What are some of the factors that contribute to successful planning? For us to have a successful plan, we need to have a shared vision, just as we have talked about it. We need to have a long-term commitment. It also depends on the leadership, the resources, the support, the appraisal, and also the desire to have all this moving on. Ladies and gentlemen, that marks the end of our lecture today. But what we have looked at today, we have looked at the definition of planning. We have said planning is a process of determining what to do and how to be done in the future in an organized way so that the objectives of an individual, a group, are achieved. We have gone further and looked at the forms of plan and we have said there are only two forms it is either a formal plan or an informal plan and this has also taken us to the types of plan where we have looked at the corporate plan the tactical plan the stand use plan single use plan the specific plan and all these are plans that we have looked at and it has also led us to understand the approaches of planning and these approaches of planning we have ever said it is either a top down approach or bottom up approach only two all of them have got their advantages and all of them have got their disadvantages we have gone further and looked at if that is what we have we have understood a simple planning cycle that starts from situation analysis situation analysis will take you to problem analysis and priority setting priority setting will take you to the third stage of what program appraisal and programming and that takes you to implementation and then it will take you to monitor evaluation and takes you back to the situation analysis we have understood also the characteristics of planning. And lastly, second to none, we have also looked at the principles of planning. And then after that, we have looked at the planning process. After looking at the planning process, we have also understood what does it take for the plan and the process. They need to be integrated. They need to be inclusive. They need to be realistic. They need to be appropriate. They need to be result-based. They need to be community-based. And they need to be easy to understand. That marks the end of our lecture. Once again, allow me to pray 
Lord, play with us. Bless us. Continually provide for us as we also put planning as aspect of our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.